Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we've got highlights of our match against Middleton CC for what will be our final home game of the season. Where's that time gone, eh? Currently we're in sixth position with nothing really to play for, never going to win the league and safe from relegation. So just a bit of pride, I guess, and the remote possibility of finishing in fourth spot. Currently sitting in fourth are today's visitors who won pretty emphatically in the return fixture earlier in the season, bowling us out for 116 in just 28 overs. No chance for a repeat of that today as Joe won the toss and chose to field first, with potential spells of rain later disrupting the match, as well as the ground normally suiting the team chasing, his reasoning behind it. First over, trusted with the brand new pink ball, is Mr Blanford. Worth mentioning, today is Thorne's final match this season for us. He's returning back to the Southern Hemisphere to kickstart his Otago Vaults pre-season. Here's hoping it will be a good one to send him out on. Second over goes to Aaron Brown, who will also be playing cricket over the winter, having signed this week for Edinburgh CC down in Melbourne, Australia. I'm sure he'll have an unreal time over there, on and off the pitch. Little bit of movement away and Ollie gets us on the board today. Little edge there and Walker with the gloves taking the catch. 21 runs put on for the first wicket and that one falling after 4.5 overs. Joe sees that one and moves early, claiming it in front of Ross's lap, but he puts a simple chance down and Ollie does well to bite his tongue and not say anything to his mate there. Luckily for Joe, the drop didn't cost him too many and Aaron strikes to remove the other Middleton open at LBW. Nearly out of the power play and the score is 46 for two in the eighth over.
So 10 overs and that power play done now. The score, 55 for two. Really liked Drizzle, persistent for the entirety of that first period, but never came down hard enough to take us off, thankfully. Next up, and the first bowling change of the day, we've got the caveman, George Cave, replacing Ollie from the near end. And it's a double change as now we've got Aaron's big brother, Ollie, on to replace him from the far end, looking to nibble it away and make things tricky for the batsman. You don't need to be a body language expert to read those mannerisms. I think both Ollie and Joe really like that one. And of course, next ball after an appeal like that, dispatch to the boundary to rub salt in the wounds. Cave picks up his first and it's Dano at slip, diving to his left to catch that well. A big edge and thankfully Joe's weight on his other side so he didn't try and pinch that one too. 76 for three in the 15th over. Ollie has his first now, Middleton skipper Sean Heather playing that one onto his leg stump and that's a huge wicket for the boys. Middleton four wickets down and all four of our bowlers so far on the wicket tally. The final ball before drinks there, just coming up short of Ollie at the short mid-wicket. And at the break, the visitors are 86 for four after 17 overs. A good start and a chance to see the middle to middle and low order, seeing as we didn't see lower than their number four earlier in the season. Ollie continues and five balls after the drinks break he sent down that absolute beaut to take his second. Ollie removes the off stump and the batsman in disbelief at how the ball's nipped away to hit the top of off. So the wickets continue and we're halfway through now with a score 87 for five in the 18th. Another one and Ollie Brown's in the action again with the catch down at fine leg. It keeps getting better. Cave bowls a straightish delivery and the little flick of the leg sends the ball straight to Arl on the fence. Middleton now six wickets down. Three balls later and George has his second this over. Richie Weber holds on to that one at mid on and these wickets just keep on falling today. The score now 89 for seven after 19.
Dano diving to his left again at slip, just about rolling into shot. Ollie Brown has his third wicket. Any more and Edinburgh CC will be getting a name change on that flight ticket. They might have signed the wrong Brown. Saving the best till last, Dano's third catch of the day and the best of the lot. Little bit of air time and throwing a right mitt up to take that one effortlessly. Let's take another look. So Middleton now nine wickets down and 92 runs on the board in the 22nd over. And that's five wickets for Ollie Brown. An incredible spell from him today to take his maiden prem fifer. Say it quietly, but before brother Aaron has as well. He was backed up by George Cave at the other end, taking three for 12. Ollie's figures, five for 23 from his 5.5 overs. Middleton were 76 for two at one stage, then ended up all out for 95 inside 22 overs. So opening up for us and hoping to chase this before 3 p.m. when a new band of rain was forecast is Dan Alderman at two and back into the team this week at one, James Russell. Four boundaries in the first over gets the chase off to a great start. James Russell taking no time to get going today. 18 off that first over and it's 78 more needed to win. Four runs from Dano and next ball he's out LBW. An early wicket exactly what Middleton needed. And a few more early ones in this power play will make things a little more interesting. To the crease at three for potentially the final time in a Bridges shirt is Thorn Parks. Two Premier League hundreds for the Kiwi this season. Obviously can't get a third today, but we'll be looking to score a few and get safely over the line. What have we got here? One of the locals. It's one of Crawley's Larry Bikers. Local idiot who nearly comes a cropper there. That would have been embarrassing. for one after six now and just 56 needed for the victory and 30 points.
Thorn, the second man out, LBW there. A quick fire, 37 off 25 deliveries today. Great bloke on and off the pitch. Thorn's probably back in Dunedin by the time this goes out. Have a good season, mate. Hope the jet lag isn't too bad. We'll all be keeping a keen eye on you this season and in the future. Eighty-two for two now, and Rahul in at number four. Yeah. Russ, the third wicket to go. Forty from twenty-seven balls for our opener before being stumped off the leg spin of Sambi. Next up to the crease with eleven needed is the skipper Joe Walker. Scores level and that wide settles it. An emphatic seven wicket win for the Bridges today in our last home outing of the season. Damage done with the ball from Cavey and of course Ollie Brown and then some decent striking from Russ and Thorne doing the damage with the bat. And a good job we did finish early. About 45 minutes after we finished a load of rain came down. Probably wasn't enough to cancel it but three matches in the league were cancelled so we made some decent ground up today versus the rest of the league. That puts us up into fifth ahead of our final league match of the season away to second place Preston Nomads who can't win the league as leaders Cookfield won the league this week and are 60 points clear. Well done to those lads. Thanks everyone for watching and now we've got a quick message from Joey and Thorne for you. You ready? Yeah, look, real shame to see Thorne go. We've, we've loved him this year. Um, he's been so good on and off the field and we've had, you know, too much fun, I think. But um, yeah, it's been great to have you. What were your thoughts, mate? No, I loved it. It's been a good time. Thanks for the boys looking after me and hopefully be back next year, eh? 